Hello everybody, uh, got some more boxing going on here this morning, um, a few more bouts in the heavyweight tournament uh, using Legends of Boxing PC, uh, preliminary round games, I had kind of a little mix up the last few fights, uh, there was three fights that uh, did not get recorded, or they, I meant to record them, but uh, I did not record them properly, so they decided just to go ahead and uh, uh, move on. I'll show you the results of those fights. They weren't, if they were big fights, and I might have been a little more upset, but it was the uh, some of the lesser known guys. Um, so let's head to the ring and uh, take a look and see who we got up today. So, first of all, let's do uh, Hans Berkey defeated Stan Ward by split decision. A couple of close fights here that uh, we had. Uh, the other one was Jose Luis Garcia beat Freddie Bashore by split decision. I thought that uh, in the within the fight, I thought Garcia had a unanimous decision, but they had it. Uh, Freddie Bashore, uh, Judge One had him uh, in the fight, but Garcia advances. Uh, Berkey against Ward was a uh, was a little closer. I could not, I could not myself decide who. Uh, who I thought won that fight. It was pretty, really even. Then McNeely beat Pedro Lavelle by TKO in round five. Uh, well, let's look at the Hans Berkey fight first. Uh, Sward actually led in point punch points, but uh, it was Berkey that won the uh, total. Uh, uh, Berkey had a, uh, some cuts that were really giving him trouble in this fight. His defense was affected and uh, thought that would come into play in this one. Uh, but it never did. They both had 60 KO points uh, by the end of the fight. Uh, but a good, good overall fight. It, it actually, uh, Berkey with a losing record. Ward, not a great record, but he was... Uh, these weren't the highest quality of fighters, but they fought uh, like they were. Uh, good back and forth battle. Uh, I enjoyed playing that one. The next one was McNeely against Lavelle, and Pedro Lavelle didn't really give up much of a battle uh, or much of a fight, as uh, McNeely pretty much punished him. Uh, Lavelle looked good in the first round, but after that. He, he was uh, beat up pretty good, and then finally in the fifth, the referee said that was enough. Stopped the fight. As you see by the punch points, it was total domination by McNeely. He advances to the next round. And then there are our final bout, Garcia. This one was a real bloody fight as both fighters uh, were cut up pretty good. Uh, and uh, Garcia uh, wins it, uh, beat uh, Bashore on punch points, and I thought it was, a unit, like I said, a unanimous decision. I thought for sure Garcia won it outright, and then, then when the first judge came up, 150-113 Bashore, I was a little shocked, but uh, Garcia took the final two judges' scores and wins the split decision. He advances. Today we got... Uh, James, a couple modern day fighters, James Bone Crusher Smith taking on David Bay, and that'll be up first. Uh, take a look at the preview here. Bone Crusher, 44, 17, and 1, with 32 knockouts out of Magnolia, Magnolia North Carolina. Uh, and David Bay, 18, 11, and 1. Uh, 14 knockouts. He's out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, both these guys, physical fighters. Uh, so they're even there as far as their uh, c control is uh, goes. Defense, advantage goes to Smith. Power, slight edge to Smith. But the chin is where the bone crusher gets him. He He's actually gone the distance with Mike Tyson. And Bay, his chin's not nearly as good. And uh, endurance-wise, he has the edge there. So Bone Crusher Smith, I would say, would be the favored fighter in this fight. 
Let's head to the ring and get going on this one. Round one. On his toes, dancing left and sometimes going back right. These two attempted blows miss just as those two miss. And there go the lefts again and then the right in combination, then another left. So Bone Crusher landed a big, huge straight right hand and then went after, thought he had Bay hurt. Bay fought back, but the cross at the end of the round really tagged Bay good. And uh, we'll see how he answers the next round as he got hit with some great shots. Round two. David Bay is down six, seven, eight, nine. He just gets up. The referee doesn't know if he could continue. He's looking him over. He's telling him to look at him. Bay looks. And he's gonna let him continue. He's down again. Bay reaching for the ropes. Trying to get up. He does. Can he continue? Oh, he's saved by the bell. Bone Crusher Smith was ready to pounce on him. But David Bay... We'll live to see another round. That was quite a... Uh, let's look at the the round there. Knocked him down early and then could not finish him. And then out of the blue, Bay started throwing some haymakers, trying to land something, but it was Bone Crusher that tagged him at the end of the round and he went down again. So, Bone Crusher Smith, so far, has been all over David Bay. Round three. These two attempted blows missed just as those two missed.
Oh my goodness. Bone Crusher Smith all of a sudden opened up the uh, blood works and blood started pouring out of every orifice. He is in some serious trouble. Serious trouble. He needs to end this fight quickly if he wants to avoid a horrible decision and letting David Bay advance on a cut. Round four. And there go the lefts again, and then the right in combination, then another left. There's the left and right in combination again. A dominant round by David Bay as he knows he's got ba uh, Smith in trouble with those cuts. And he came after Bone Crusher Smith relentlessly in that round and uh, almost had him. But uh, Smith gets through the round. It's going to be a pretty much a uh, uh, crapshoot now if he's going to be able to continue in this fight. He's going to have to do something as far as his, his uh, uh, I would imagine he's going to go pressure mode here because being so cut to, uh, so close to the fight getting stopped, he wants to end this fight quickly, especially since Bay's chin is weakened by the knockdowns. So we're going to say he goes pressure mode. Bone Crusher Smith was unable to get that right hand loose. And David Bay landed a couple big combinations uh, to help keep him at bay. We head to round six. This fight has got interesting all of a sudden as Bone Crusher Smith was favored by quite a bit. But uh, he's struggling right now with those cuts.
These guys are trading shots here in the middle rounds. Bay can sense that uh, the referee is keeping a close eye on Smith and he wants to keep that blood flowing. We head to round seven. Both fighters now in fatigue. Round seven. from Bone Crusher Smith as he's starting to be a little more comfortable. Bay starting to really tire here. We head to round eight. So another solid round from Bone Crusher Smith. I would say we're going to look at the thing. I think uh, he, uh, Bone Crusher Smith definitely up pretty good on all three cards. He is 78 73, two rounds from David Bay, the third and the fourth. One even, the fifth. So we head to round nine. And now, with Bay going pressure, crush, bone crush will stay on the outside. Got in a good left. Woo, he got close there. it the referee is going to stop it David Bay raising his fist he cannot even believe his cell himself he has beaten bone crusher Smith they stop it at 152 of round nine the TKO win stopped because of cuts and the winner and advancing to the next round David Bay I'm sure quite an upset here in the first uh, preliminary rounds. Let's take a look at the final Bone Crusher up on the punch train. He was up on all three cards by the stoppage, but there was just too much blood. And Bone Crusher, unfortunately, will take a seat.
in this tournament. Up next, Kali Nutzi versus Gunnar Barland. Oh, I forgot to get a picture for him. Uh, Nutzi, 21-6 with 20 knockouts out of Pretoria, Russia. Not much uh, defensively. Decent power. Gunnar Barland out of Helsinki, Finland. 56 wins, 30 losses, 1 draw, 28 knockouts. He doesn't have very much defense either. And these both these guys are going to be even as far as control goes. They'll both have equal CTN numbers. Nobody has any kind of special trait. Uh, the only difference between the two really is the uh, chin by Nutsi is uh, a little better. And uh, finisher, if Gar Barland, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name, Barland, Barland uh, gets, uh, hurts Nutsi, then uh, he does have a little better finisher. He can finish a little better than uh, Nutsi can. So endurance wise, a little slight edge for Barland. We head to the ring. Nutsi opens up in pressure mode. Barland on the inside. Round one. Score. To the left. Right there. Scores with those rights and lefts. Quick, chopping blows. Right there. Big round for Kali Nutsi as he came out throwing shots and landing, but Gunnar Barlin takes him and keeps moving forward. We head to round two. Nutsi goes to the outside now. Barlin stays on the inside. Ali Nutsi with a solid round. Barland is just taking his time and looking for that one big punch. He's been unable to find it so far. We head to round three. Good quick 
That was a close round, but it was Nutsi's uh, landing the punch, the big a couple big hooks in that round, that uh, Gunnar Barlin started to develop some swelling above his right eye. See how that affects him the rest of this fight. We had to round four. Gardner Barlin with his first big round as he hammered Notsy with some big shots. A couple of hooks and that uppercut at the end of the round. And uh, he'll take that round easily. We head to round five. Again, Garner Barlin coming back here with another good round for him. And Nutsi gets admonished by the referee once again. He's been hitting on the break. So the momentum starting to shift here in the middle rounds. Round six. So the big cross landed by Nutsi was the punch of the round, and that might have might have won him the round. As Gunnar Barland seemed to back off after that shot. We head to round seven, and Gunnar Barland is now into level fati one fatigue. His power goes down to a two, and he's going to go to pressure mode against Nutsi. Strong round. 
from Garb Ireland as he took the action to Nutsian. Beat him to the punch on most of the action there. We head to round eight. Let's check what the ringside judge has through seven. My guess would be four rounds to three in favor of Nutsi. Oh, look at this. Two, three, four, five. Five rounds to two in favor of Gunnar Barland. That's surprising. But that's not uh, what the official result might be. So we'll have to wait and see. Round eight. Owned the action in that round as Barlin seemed to take the round off to gather his composure. We head to round nine. comes back answers uh, Garland's early uh, lead in this round and and then Barland lands a shot after the bell the referee threatens to take a point away as both fighters head to their corners this one's going to end In a bad way, you have a feeling. A lot of animosity now between these two guys. We head to round 10. The round ends. What an interesting round that was. Nutsi dominated the action and actually has Barlin bleeding profusely as he opened up a deep cut under the left eye and also uh, mouth bleeding from the mouth. But Nutsi lands a low blow and the referee has seen enough. He's going to take a point away. So all that work and 
It's probably a 9-9 round. With two rounds left, Nutsi needs some big rounds here, and that doesn't help his position. But he is on uh, pretty... Uh, the referees are really looking at him closely, Barland, and they could uh, we could have back-to-back -back stoppages by cuts. Round 11. Big round, Nutsi almost had the ref on the cusp of stopping the fight. His TKO points are up to 10, and he's rated a seven, so we head to round 12. Let's see what the ringside judge has. And they got Barlin comfortably in the lead, and what? They actually gave Barland that last round. How, I have no idea. Barland will go on the outside, try to coast to this. He thinks he might have this fight won, but he doesn't, doesn't want to get tagged here. Uh, I'm guessing he would probably go elusive. Oh, he can't go elusive. Go to the outside. Here we go. My feeling is Nutsi probably does not have an idea that he is losing the fight. Because I thought he was winning the fight. Uh, so I'm going to say he goes to the inside. Here we go. Round 12. And they're going to stop the fight. And Gunnar Barlin just had a point reduction. Both fighters now getting deductions. Good quick combination on the inside. Another foul. He is trying to lose this fight. Good combination. Excellent right following the left jab. That's it. This fight is over, folks. The referee is stopping the fight with the blood and the punishment here in round 12. Cali Nuzzi is going to win by TKO 220 of round 12. So close. Barlon almost got himself a decision. Let's see what the referees had on this fight. They would have had Barlin. It would have been a... Well, he would have won this round, so that would have been... It would have been a still a split decision victory for Barlin if he could have held that last 30, second, 40 sec, 30 seconds of their fight. Bootsy did dominate the point, punch points. But he also had those fouls too, so he would have been. That would have been. That would have hurt him. Because it probably would have been 10 uh, 8 on each. Uh, so that would have been 113 to 113. 113 to 113. And. Yeah, actually would have been a majority draw. 
more than likely. But in the end, Nutsi gets the TKO. Controversial ending there. It had a little bit of everything. Uh, but Kelly Nutsi will advance to the next round. Up next, Don Cockle, the heavyweight from London, England. 66 wins, 14 losses, one draw, 38 knockouts. He's taking on Ron the Butcher Stander out of Omaha, Nebraska. 37 wins, 21 losses, 3 draws, 28 wins by knockout. Both these guys with average power. Uh, Stander has a better chin. And uh, other than that, they're pretty pretty even. Little def Cockle a little better defensively, and Cockle will have the edge as far as control goes. Let's head to the ring. Standard does not uh, fight on the outside at all. Inside and pressure is the only two uh, modes he fights in. Uh, so here we go, both on the inside. Round one. Excellent right following the left jab. Nice opening round from Don Cockle as he uh, used a couple good uppercuts and a couple big hooks to uh, bust open Ron Stander's lip here in the first round. And again, it looks like we might have another possible cut stoppage as both these guys do not cut well. Makes some interesting Makes for some interesting fights here. Cockle stays on the inside. Stander goes to pressure. Round two. Excellent right following the left jab. And they're scoring heavily by the right. And they're scoring heavily by the right. Cockle, again, slight edge to him as Stander was in pressure mode, but it was Cockle landing the shots late in that round. We head to round three. Both fighters back to the inside. Another good round for Cockle, as now Stander has three, through three rounds, has three TKO points, Cockle with zero. So the punishment uh, being landed by Cockle.
We head to round four. Both fighters stand on the inside. So Stander finally, with his best round, he finally gets a neat TKO point on Cockle, but also sees some swelling develop above his right eye. We head to round five. They're starting to bleed from his nose as that was an action round there. Both fighters trading shots. Cockle comes out on top as far as landing the most of the doing most of the damage. But Stander held his own. We head to round six. is down he had hit with a huge body shot went to a knee he's getting up this round is going to be over he'll be saved by the bell as Stander lands the punch of the fight so far a huge hook to the body that put Cockle on one knee and we'll head to round 7 as Stander Makes it a whole new ball game. See what the ringside judge has now. And it's still cockled by one, 57-56. That's about right. Stander has been outpunched by Cockle. But that knockdown might be the beginning of something big for Stander here. Missed 
just as those two miss. Cockle seems a little tentative that round after the knockdown and Stander a little more confident, lands some big punches. And that has to be a round that goes to Stander. We head to round eight. Ron Stander went for a big uh, straight right and missed and uppercut as he is coming in, lands and hurts Stander as his knees just went like jelly, but the bell sounds and we Cockle will not be able to act on it, but uh, Cockle's probably his best punch of the fight as both fighters can claim victory in that round. Big round for Cockle there with that punch. Cockle did develop some cut, uh, swelling above his left eye though. And uh, here we go. We head to round nine. Both these fighters start to tire. There was a fairly even round. Uh, Cockle was admonished for a low blow in that round. And he did get a TKO point on Stander. He has hit six. His TKO rating is an eight. Cockle's is at five. He's rated a seven. So we head to round ten. Stander with a strong 10th round. Couple good body shots that stood Cockle up. We head to round 11. Let's see what the ringside judge has to say here. I would think Cockle regained his composure earlier. I think it's going to be a slight lead, two, maybe two-point lead by Cockle. Oh, they've got it even. They've got it even, 95 all. As far as the ringside judge goes, we head to round 11. Both fighters to the inside. to a 
attempted blows. Missed just as those two missed. Got in a good left. The round ends, and both fighters getting handed some low blows. First, it was Stander landing the low blow, and then Cockle with the even more low blow, and he gets one point deduction. That's not going to help his cause going into round 12. They said it was per. Uh, Malicious and take the point away from Cockle. And close as this fight is, that's a point you want you don't want to be given away. And we're gonna go into the twelfth and final round. Cockle will go to the outside, standard to the inside. Another big low blow, and that could cost Cockle the fight. And this one's going to the judges, and I have to think that those low blows... In the last two rounds have cost Cockle this fight. Let's see what the official result is. Judge won. One oh, we're going to even. 115-111 Stander. And 117-111 Stander. Majority decision goes to Stander. And I guess it wouldn't have mattered. Even if you took those two rounds away. Stander still would have won. And that probably would just gave Cockle one, so it still would have been a majority decision. Slight edge, very even fight. Uh, Cockle with the only knockdown of the, uh, or I'm sorry, Standard with the only knockdown of the fight. And that probably is what won him the fight. So the winner, by majority decision. Ron, the Butcher, Stander, he will advance to the next round of this tournament. And up next, we're going to take a break here and come back another video. Herbie Hyde will take it on Johnny Risco. And uh, Hyde has got some big... Uh, power behind his punches and Risco not so much so but he's got the endurance so if he can and he's a tactical fighter so he's gonna have to box to get by Hyde then you got Manuel Ramos versus Tom Heaney I think I said this in another video. You don't see too many Mexican heavyweights. He's one of the few. 24, 29, and 3. Not a great record. But he is competitive. And he's facing a light-hitting Tom Heaney out of uh, New Zealand. Thad Spencer against Boone Kirkman. And... Uh, Pretty even, really even uh, as far as numbers go. Thad Spencer with a little better uh, defense. 
Toxie Hall will take on Joe Erskine. I need to get a picture of Toxie Hall. Joe Erskine. Good defensive fighter. Other than that, they're pretty even. And then we got the rematch between Pedro Agosto and Billy Daniels. So that's it from here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next round.